Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I sit on the board of trustees of the International Menopause Society, and I am so pleased to be joined today by Dr. Pauline Mackey to talk about a topic that is so important to women. But first, Pauline, can you introduce yourself to our healthcare practitioners? Sure, I'm Dr. Pauline Mackey. I'm professor of psychiatry, psychology, and obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Illinois at Chicago, and I'm also a member of the Board of Trustees of the International Menopause Society. So let's talk about something that as healthcare practitioners, we hear from women a lot. And it's not just hot flashes and night sweats, but what a lot of women care about is what's happening to their cognitive ability as they are transitioning through menopause, because many women will note that there is a change and they'll come to us worried that something terrible is happening and wanting to know, is this because they're getting older and this is something inevitable? Yeah, so menopause practitioners are on the front lines of this. This is who women see. And data from very large sample sizes validates what you just said, Dr. Shapiro. The forgetfulness complaint is the third most frequent complaint in the menopause. Um, and it's the second most among perimenopausal women. So more than hot flashes. So this is a very, very common complaint uh, that different individuals encounter when they transition through the menopause. Now, just as there are a lot of different individual differences in the pregnancy experience, there are lots of different individual differences in brain fog with some women sailing through the menopause with nary a problem and some women having very significant cognitive issues as they transition through the menopause. So women will ask us, is this just aging and not necessarily think that it is a link to menopause because the two are happening in and around the fifth decade or so. So for us as practitioners, what do we need to know about the role of the menopausal transition, late perimenopause, early menopause? What role is it having, if any? So there are two things happening, at least at midlife, to influence cognitive functioning in women. One is clearly the aging process, which affects men at this age as well. Then there's this parallel process, which is reproductive aging or the menopause. Now we do have pretty solid evidence to show that the changes in estradiol in particular during the menopausal transition contribute to those memory problems. How do we know this? Because studies that have followed women before and after removal of the ovaries show that in premenopausal women, removal of the ovaries results in a decrease in memory performance that can be completely reversed with add back estrogen. So that's the proof of concept. In addition, we have data to show that the functioning of memory areas of the brain, including our hippocampus and our prefrontal cortex, that functioning is affected by levels of estradiol during the menopausal transition. So we do know that these hormonal changes contribute to memory problems in midlife. So I guess the question that many practitioners have is, is it directly the impact of the loss of estradiol or is it because with a loss of estradiol, so many women have hot flashes, night sweats, disrupted sleep, and that's the reason that they're running into trouble? Yeah, the answer is both. So we have studies to show that even in the absence of vasomotor symptoms, so even among women with relatively few vasomotor symptoms, there is this change in memory. However, the presence of menopausal symptoms, particularly vasomotor symptoms, in sleep disturbance, as well as mood dis disturbance, layer on to that hormonal factor and exacerbate these kinds of changes. We do know that the measurable decreases in memory that we and others have found in our large prospective studies are evident um, on average in women. They're kind of small. They're about a quarter of a standard deviation. Uh, and we know that those persist even when we control for menopausal symptoms. So the menopausal symptoms doesn't explain away this kind of hormonal effect that we measure in our studies. So I think we can't emphasize this enough for our practitioners because although the study is decades old, the Women's Health Initiative made many practitioners fear that the use of estrogen might accelerate dementia. When we talk about the timing hypothesis and the window of opportunity for women for cardiovascular health, is that the same for cognition, dementia, and use of estrogen? Because many women 
won't even think about estrogen because of the concern that one leads to the other? Such an important question, Dr. Shapiro. So here's where we rely on evidence from that very study, the Women's Health Initiative study. And following the major publication that showed that in older women, the use of combined conjugated equine estrogen plus medroxyprogesterone acetate doubled the risk of all-cause dementia. So that's what led to that black box warning. The WHI investigators took their lens and looked at the younger women, women in their 50s. So these are the women uh, who initiate hormone therapy typically in the clinic setting, right? So they asked, do you see the same negative effect, if you will, on memory? And even with that more risky formulation of hormone therapy, there was no enduring negative effect whatsoever in the women aged 50 to 59 in that study. So in that very study that gave rise to the alerts, we have pretty good assurance that these younger women are not showing those kinds of vulnerabilities. I'd like to add one more thing to that, however, and that is that the WHI selected out women who were highly symptomatic, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't yet know, isn't it strange? We don't yet know if hormone therapy improves memory for women who have a lot of bothersome hot flashes. That randomized trial hasn't been done. So that brings us back to probably an unanswerable question. On the one hand, if we watch women who transition through menopause, get a little bit of the cognitive impact, brain fog as our patients call it, and then bounce back a little bit as they lead into menopause, the question that practitioners wanna know and women wanna know is do I just wait this out or will the addition of estrogen actually do me some good when it comes to my brain? Yeah, so here we know that the functioning of the hippocampus, the memory center of the brain, is plastic at this time. In other words, when you're learning right now with me and Dr. Shapiro, what you're doing is you're relying on your left hippocampus, okay? As we age, we have to recruit the right hippocampus too to get this information in line. Research shows that the extent to which women need to recruit the right hippocampus depends on their estrogen level. The lower the estrogen level, the more they recruit the right hippocampus. Work by our team and others suggest that the use of hormone therapy early in the transition keeps our left hippocampus functioning. So that's kind of an interesting theoretical way of understanding what's going on. However, because we don't have the randomized trial to show that hormone therapy maintains memory functioning in women, we can't really treat to that. And that's why IMS guidelines say, don't use hormone therapy to you know, maintain cognitive function or prevent Alzheimer's disease. The caveat there is that our work also shows that hot flashes, when we measure them objectively with ambulatory monitors, are related to memory performance, brain functioning when women are remembering, brain functioning when women are at rest in the structure of their brain. Right. So treating to symptoms, which the guidelines always say to do, right? So that's the gold standard uh, treatment for vasomotor symptoms. That idea also translates over to brain health in that hot flashes themselves do appear to contribute to some of the memory problems that women have at midlife, in part through their effects on sleep. And finally, before I let you go, for women that are seeing us and for whatever reason will not consider menopausal hormone therapy, even for those women who have symptomatic hot flashes where you know it's going to help them, what other advice can we offer them in terms of their lifestyle, not instead of, but in addition to, or for those who absolutely won't treat, as at least something that you can do in terms of taking control of your own health and health outcomes? Yeah, so here there, there's pretty good data to suggest what clinicians can say to their patients to help them optimize their brain health. One is to have them engage in lifestyle uh, factors that will influence and improve their sleep. So good quality sleep is key. You know, avoiding caffeine later in, in the day, engaging in routine sleep behaviors, that's critically important. We now know that a single night sleep deprivation increases markers of Alzheimer's disease in the cerebral mm -hmm. spinal fluid. Incredible data, causal data about the association between sleep quality 
in brain health. So sleep, we cannot overemphasize the importance of sleep. Another thing women often do at midlife is they're stressed in part because hormones affect our ability, hormonal changes affect our ability to deal with stress. Sometimes women will go for that second glass of wine or that third glass of wine. That's not a good idea. The decreases in estrogen actually make women's brains more vulnerable to the negative effects of alcohol. So women need to limit their alcohol intake at this time. What do they do instead to decrease their stress? They can engage in yoga to decrease their stress. They can engage in some aerobic exercise, brisk walking. They can do this in very short stints, confers benefits to brain functioning, and they can keep their brains active. Now, what does that mean? Uh, am I like Dr. Shapiro and I just engage in dialogue about my area of expertise? Well, that doesn't hurt, but what you really need to do is run a marathon with your brain, meaning you have to do something very challenging. You have to learn a new language. You have to learn a new discipline, learn how to dance. So it's new learning. New learning is the exercise that helps us to maintain brain health. They have to stop smoking. That's really important and maintain really good cardiovascular health. So if you're encouraging your patients to try to get control over their uh, cardiovascular risk factors, telling them that these are not only linked to myocardial infarction, but also to Alzheimer's disease can, all, can be effective in helping women to really take the steps that they need to maintain their cardiovascular health. So all of those would be good steps. Great learning. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me.